Hello and welcome to lecture two in electrochemistry. Today we're going to be talking about oxidation numbers. Of course these are the learning outcomes prescribed by Alberta Learning. Um, they form the basis for the bulk of the dip diploma exam questions you'll see. Um, and I'm providing them to you on each lecture to keep tabs on how well your progress is coming in the unit. Oxidation numbers are a system of assigning um, a notional charge to each, each species involved in the chemical reaction. They don't represent an actual charge. They're really just an accounting system um, that um, allows us to uh, manipulate electrochemical equations uh, in sort of many different practical ways. The rules for assigning oxidation numbers uh, to species are as follows. Um, the sum of the oxidation numbers for a neutral compound has to equal zero. The sum of the oxidation numbers for an ion is the ion charge. And here we're talking about polyatomic ions. If you're dealing with a covalent molecule, say uh, CO2 or H2O, the more electronegative atom gets the electrons. So it'll get the negative oxidation number and the um, less electronegative atom will get the positive oxidation number. Unknown oxidation numbers are determined uh, algebraically with the following rules. So all atoms in elemental form get an oxidation number of zero. So for example, atomic sodium, but also chlorine in a Cl2 molecule has an oxidation number of zero. So all the diatoms like O2 and H2 and Cl2, the oxidation number for the atoms involved there is, is zero. Hydrogens in all compounds, except for those diatoms, is plus one. So H and HCl, H and H2O is plus one. The only exception are the hydrides. So potassium hydride, sodium hydride, lithium hydride, H has an oxidation number of minus one. Oxygen in all compounds is minus two. So O and H2O, O and CO2 will be a minus two oxidation number, except for the peroxides. In the peroxides, like H2O2, it'll have an oxidation number of minus one. And then finally, for monatomic ions, their oxidation number is their charge. So for the sodium ion, the oxidation number is plus one. For the sulfide ion, the oxidation number is minus two. Um, just a word on uh, what these numbers mean. They describe notional charge and notional movement of electrons, not actual electron flow. So there's not a lot of chemistry behind these rules, but they're quite a useful analytical tool. So here's our first question. Assign oxidation numbers to chlorine in each of the following. And I'll take them up one at a time to give you a sense of the analysis involved. HCl. I know the hydrogen rule is plus one, so the chlorine here must be minus one. Cl2. This is neutral chlorine in a, a diatom of chlorine, so it's going to be zero. Here I have an ionic compound, and the sodium is monatomic ion. It's plus one. Oxygen rule is a minus two. So minus two and plus one. The chlorine must be plus one because the oxidation states have to add up to the charge in the particle, which is zero. So plus one. Here I have a monatomic ion. The oxidation number is the same as the ion charge. The ion charge is one minus, so the oxidation number is minus one. And uh, just take a note there. The ion charge is number followed by sign, but the oxidation number is sign followed by number. Uh, follow that convention. Here's a more complex example. The oxygen rule is minus two, and there are three oxygens. So, so the total oxidation state of the oxygen is minus six. The hydrogen rule, of course, is plus one. Excuse me, the mouse disappeared. So minus six and plus one. The chlorine must be plus five to balance out the oxidation states to the charge in the particle, which is zero. So plus five. Here's four more examples. The oxygen has a minus two oxidation state. There's three of them for a total of minus six. The charge in the particle is one minus, so the chlorine must be plus five. Here, the, the oxygen is minus two, and there's two of them for a total of minus four. The potassium is in ionic form, so it's plus one. So the chlorine must be plus three to balance out the oxidation states to zero. Here, the oxygen is minus two, and there's two of them for a total of minus four. The chlorine must be plus four to balance out the oxidation states to zero. And finally, here the oxygen is minus two, there's four of them for minus eight. 
The hydrogen rule is plus 1, so the chlorine must be plus 7 to balance out the oxidation states to 0. Assign oxidation numbers to manganese. I think I got a few here involving manganese, and then we'll move on to application of uh, uh, these oxidation number rules. Oxygen is minus 2, and there's two of them. So that's minus 4 in total. The manganese must be plus 4 to balance out the, the charge uh, to the charge of 0 on the particle. Oxygen is minus 2 and there's 4 of them for a total of minus 8. Potassium is plus 1, so the manganese must be plus 7. And it has to be plus 7 because the oxidation states had to, had to, have to add up to 0, which is the charge in the particle. Here's elemental manganese. Its oxidation state must be 0. Oxygen is minus 2 and there's 4 of them for a total of minus 8. The charge in the particle is 2 minus, so the manganese must be plus, uh, plus 6 to balance out the oxidation states to the charge in the particle. Here, chlorine, this is an ionic compound. Chlorine has got a, a minus 1 charge, and there's two of them for a total of minus 2. So the manganese must be plus 2. Ionic compound, oxygen is minus 2 for a total of minus 14. The manganese must be plus 14, but there's two of them. So each manganese must be plus 7. And then finally, here's the manganese 2 ion. Its oxidation number is the same as its ion charge. So it's got a 2 plus charge. It must have a plus 2 oxidation state. For each of the following, use oxidation numbers to identify the oxidation and the reduction. The oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. So here's our reaction. And uh, I'm just going to give you the oxidation numbers right there real quick. The arsenic here is plus 3 because I've got minus 2 for the oxygen. There's 3 of them for a total of minus 6. Minus 6 and plus 3 equals the ion charge, which is 3 minus. Here the iodine is plus 5. If you think about it, oxygen is minus 2. There's 3 of them for a total of minus 6. Minus 6 and plus 5 equals the ion charge of minus 1. Here the oxygen is 2 minus. There's 4 of them for a total of minus 8. The arsenic is plus 5 because plus 5 and minus 8 equals our 3 minus. And then finally, a monatomic ion, its, its oxidation state is the same as its ion charge, my, minus 1. But look what's happening here. The arsenic is going from plus 3 to plus 5. Um, it's actually losing two electrons on that analysis. So it's being oxidized. It's being oxidized by the iodine. The iodine is going from plus 5 to minus 1. That's gaining 6 electrons per iodine atom. So it's being reduced. So the arsenic ion is being oxidized and the iodine ion is being reduced the, and, and that's set out here the arsenic is going from oxidation number plus three to plus five so it's being oxidized the iodine is going from plus five to minus one so it's being reduced becoming more negative gaining electrons at least notionally for the following equation use oxidation numbers to identify the oxidation and the reduction the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent okay so here we have an interesting reaction. We've got lead coming in in lead 4 oxide and a, a solid lead. And you've only got one lead end product. Um, we're going to analyze this and notice that the lead is being both oxidized and reduced. And this is not uncommon. We call these disproportionation reactions. In fact, this is the chemical reaction for your car battery. Um, you'll see the oxidation number on the lead 4 oxide is plus 4. The oxidation number on the pure lead is zero. And the oxidation number for the, the lead 2 sulfate is plus two. So you see that the lead from the lead 4 oxide is going from plus four to plus two. It's being reduced, it's becoming more negative. The, the pure lead is going from zero to plus two, it's becoming more positive. So the pure lead is being oxidized. So again, the lead 4 oxide is being reduced by the lead. That makes the lead the reducing agent. The lead is being oxidized by the lead for oxide, so that makes the lead for oxide the um, oxidizing agent. And again, just an explanation that this is what we call a disproportionation reaction. Um, for the following reaction, uh, use oxidation numbers to identify the oxidation and the reduction. Okay. So here we have another, and I believe this is another disproportionation reaction. Yeah, if we look at the oxidation numbers, the chlorine in the neutral diatom, diatomic molecule, has an oxidation number of zero. 
And over here in the CLO31 minus, it goes to plus 5. So in that instance, it's being oxidized. It's actually losing 5 electrons per atom. In the second instance, uh, the chlorine is going from 0 to minus 1 to the chloride ion. In that instance, it's gaining 1 electron per atom, so it's being reduced. So chlorine is both the reducing agent and the oxidizing agent. And in point of fact, it's also being reduced and oxidized through what's called the disproportionation reaction. And we see that set out here. Metals such as zinc are typically highly reactive in acidic solutions. And we're just showing HX as the general acidic formula. Write the redox for this system and assign oxidation numbers. Determine which species is being oxidized and which is being reduced and determine the spectator. So here's the reaction. And if you look at oxidation numbers, zinc is going from 0 to plus 2. It's becoming more positive. It's therefore losing electrons. It's being oxidized. Hydrogen is going from plus 1 in the acid. Sorry, I lost my mouse. Plus 1 in the acid to 0 in the, in the neutral diatomic molecule. So it's becoming more negative. It's being reduced. So the hydrogen is being reduced. The zinc is being oxidized. That makes the zinc the reducing agent. And it makes hydrogen the oxidizing agent. Zinc is being oxidized. Hydrogen is being reduced. And the spectator is the X1 minus ion. You'll see its oxidation state doesn't change from reactants to products. And I think I have one more example. Yeah, natural gas burns in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Write the reaction, assign oxidation numbers, determine what's being oxidized, which is being reduced. So here's our reaction, and here's our oxidation numbers. Look at the carbon. Carbon's going from minus 4 to plus 4. It's losing a tremendous number of electrons in this reaction. So it's being oxidized. And what's oxidizing it? Well, look at the oxygen. Going in, oxygen has an oxidation state of 0, and it goes to minus 2. So it's being reduced. It's gaining two electrons per atom. So the oxygen is being reduced and the carbon is being oxidized. So that's the end of my lecture. It, it, it's just an introductory lecture on oxidation numbers. We'll show you their practical application in subsequent lectures. But for now, uh, do the homework you've been assigned in class. And we'll see you next time when we talk about balancing redox reactions. Thank you.